Hey guys, welcome to the Ouya Cast, the web's <laughs> premier Ouya Games only podcast. I love Ouya Games. I do too. That's why we start this part podcast. <laughs> um, that's a, that was a joke though. Um, no one would ever listen to that. And plus, the Ouya is dead. Um, but we're not. It's um, dead to me. Yeah, you know, it's just dead in general. I mean, the, the the best game that came out on that system was a clock. So. Uh, oh yeah, no, that's true. But so we're not dead though. Um, so we started a podcast. Uh, this is the Bear Bear versus Man Cast. It's a it's a video game podcast about nothing. Absolutely nothing. Um, we're gonna you know, we'll talk about what we played this week. Uh, Ryan and I will um, maybe talk about a little bit of news, what's going on in the world of video games, things we think that everyone should know about, like that's things that are important to to video gamers mm. um so ryan so uh, r- nick, what's, what's my name your name is nick okay last i checked um unless you changed it for you know that thing that happened no 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 that, that didn't really pan out um oh gotcha but okay, I, cool. I i want you to i want you to tell me what, what, what kind of games you played this week video games um i played a couple of video games mm-hmm. um more. one of one of them uh, just came out this week was called Monster Hunter 4. Mm-hmm. Okay. That was a game. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll... I know that you do not care for Monster Hunter, kind of. I really, I have very strong feelings about Monster Hunter, actually. Uh, how strong? Because uh, I happen to love Monster Hunter. I don't think you do. Uh, no, I, I really do. What was the the longest you've ever played a Monster Hunter game for? Oh, I don't know. Like twenty hours. That's not. That's nothing. I know. That's if, that's, we, if we talk about percentages, that's like mm, saying I played Half Life Two for an hour, and I was like, "This is the best game ever." Yeah, that's fine. I accept that. I. I there I, is. I, I'm getting. I'm getting ahead. I'm getting ahead of you right now because I, I asked you what games you're playing, and I want to hear about that. But you the do. thing about Monster Hunter is that there is a very broad honeymoon period. We are like, man, this game's cool. I got a really huge sword. I'm fighting big monsters, and it's really satisfying when I win. And these monsters aren't that hard yet, and it's cool and whatever. Then all of a sudden, shit goes horribly wrong, and like. You realize how much grinding is required in that game, and you realize that the enemies are way too hard, and you just need to just grind out health potions just to go on regular ass missions, and it becomes the most frustrating game imaginable. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I don't know. I played a lot of, well, 20 hours Mm -hmm. of uh, Monster Hunter 3 uh, Ultimate, um, which I enjoyed. However... Um, I definitely stopped playing it, and I haven't picked it up since uh, that, because start with, of start with the brand new one. No, that's no the brand new one, which I just started playing is Monster Hunter Four Ultimate. Mm-hmm. Um, it's 3DS exclusive. Oh, and you played a lot of the Wii U 3DS cross whatever thing. Yes. Yeah, okay. I did. Um, that game is super fun, but then it got to a point where I was just like, oh, I don't need to do anything else in this game to get anything new. It's just the same shit, so I stopped playing. You mean it it was like you got to a point where it it was just like a series of missions and like then like the slightly harder missions and then then like, oh, this monster is green and this is the black version of this monster and you're like, oh, hmm. It was like, you know, I go fight the, I think it's the pink Rathalos, which is just harder Rathalos. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, no, that's, I don't need to do that. I'm all set. Yeah, and then if you want pink Rathalos armor, you have to fight that very, you have to fight that over and over. And then, like, there's different grades. It's like, the Rathalos can be made two different kinds of armor from them. Mm. And it depends on if you're fighting them in, like, X... Or, or like A rank or B rank or whatever. It's it's just so ridiculous. It's just so it does, it's so much and so esoteric. It does take forever, and I hate that part. Um, I don't actually I don't go for armor sets in that game. I just like to be able to kill the thing because yeah. killing the monster feels cool. You have to you have know. to have better armor though, or otherwise you'll just get killed in like one move. 
Yeah, and then then I just stopped playing because I'm like, well, I have to grind for about 80 hours to beat this next monster, so I won't. Just won't do it. Okay, so what, but, what? Did you play any fun games though? Or fun just, games. Just that one. Uh, well, okay. Well, so actually, I, I should I should ask before we move on. Is the newest one? I, I mean, I know it's it's on. You played on the new 3ds. Is yes, it I did. Awesome. Is like is it um, better? Does it show more promise than the other ones? Or well, if you if you have problems with Monster Hunter, boy, is this is not ga- the game mm-hmm. for you. Uh, yeah, uh, it seems exactly the same. You know, setup. You have your favorite weapon, and you grind out stuff for your favorite weapon by killing monsters that you hate. Um, over and over and over. But the cool thing is is they changed just a couple of mechanics that made it f- more fun? Question mark? Like what? Um, well, so now there's um, a lot of you can, like, jump off a cliff and then pull out your sword and stab the monster in the back and beat the shit out of it, which is just really fun. And there's, like, this little weird little mini game that you have to do when you do that to try to stay on, but I never do it good. So I was <laughs> <laughs> that does sound but cool, but I, it, I don't it's think it's really that's, fun. If they like, they have to really streamline the process because for me, I mean, plunging attacks sounds sounds very fun, but it is very fun. It's like without uh, without some sort of streamlining the process because that game is just so Japanese. It's just too Japanese to exist. It's very Japanese. That's a thing because there's a little cat person who follows you around. Um, this time, I can't. It was like a weird little person, like a one foot tall, weird mask wearing person in the last game. Yeah, and now it's a cat again. Did you, yeah, I mean, you eventually get two of them. Um, yes. And are they? Is it a unique cat, or is it like a random cat that you can get a new one of later? No, you like when you start the game, you make this cat, and you name this cat, and you give this cat mm, armor. Okay. Um, and he has, like, a personality, I guess. Um, you get to pick his own little voice. There's, like, That's five cool. different cat hayas, if you will. Um, so that's, I don't know, it's fun. It's really dumb. I've, you know, I've only played it for, you know, five hours. I haven't really yeah. killed anything that good. And the um, third one, you just, the cats were, like, they would kind of come and go, and you'd get ones that were better at some things and other things, and you'd just be like, oh, well, I don't want this cat anymore, and get a new one. But this one seems cool. more persistent. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of cool that they create the attachment, because those feline things are, uh, always, they've always been like kind of a a mascot for the series, kind of been like mm-hmm. a, a big deal. So Yeah, no, they, they, they seem to want to make it more permanent, and, you know, your cat lives in your house... And you give it the armor dinner? that you find. Uh, no, there's another cat for that. Okay, um, it's really good giant. when um, when cats cook you dinner. I know that that's kind of a big uh, that that's a reoccurring theme in Monster Hunter. I pretty much exclusively want cats to cook me dinner, just straight up. <laughs> but all right, so tell me, tell me about a fun game that you played. Uh, fun game? Do you want do you want to hear about a fun game or do you want to hear about a game that makes me feel bad for pixels? Mm, I don't even know which game Shirtoss will possibly talking about right now. That's the fun part. Um, let me hear... No, I really need something fun. Let me hear about the fun. Okay. Okay, I played shit out of Grow Home. Yeah, you were, you mentioned that to me a little bit about Grow Home. I did. I love Grow Home because Grow Home is, for those who don't know, is um, a f- weird little Ubisoft... Uh, 3D joint. platformer thing. Yeah, it's a Ubisoft joint. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I heard they put the entire Assassin's Creed Unity team on it. Anyway. Um, so it was little, so it only took 100 people and yes. $8 million as opposed to the usual budget of Ubisoft game. Yeah, that's true. No, uh, this this game cost about half a billion dollars. Uh, it took eight years to develop. None of this is true. Um, anyhow... Uh, Grow Home is, uh, you know, 3D platformer. You are this little stumbly robot man, Bud. Um, He has, it's an acronym. I can't remember what it stands for. Um, Something about Uh, botanical botanical droids. Anyway, you have these, you have your little robot graspy hands, and you grab your rocks to climb things with the triggers, and each trigger is a hand, and so it's super tactile. Mm. Um, It just feels really good to, um, 
ascend a cliff and you know climb underneath a thing to get a crystal and you're like oh yeah i gotta grab this and then grab this and then hope i don't fuck up um because you do you do fuck up all the time because limbs are hard as it turns out yeah um but it's super it's just super pretty looking um you've you like have this giant beanstalky plant you have to grow uh by riding little offshoots like a fucking cowboy just shooting that shit into rocks um you plug them in it's weird you have like little beanstalk pl- plugs and you just like wee and then you shove them in a rock and it's like thank you that was delicious that's what the that, that's what the rock says yep no I, no that's what the plant says yep. the plant says thank you that was delicious that's weird um, that you just described it that way because the first time you gave me like the super short version of that game and you said it was uh, a N64 platformer made in 2015 or something like that. That's what it feels like. It feels like um, somebody made like a super old school like collectathon, like something like Banjo Kazooie or you know Mario 64 even. Um, and you know it's all about platforming and climbing. It's climbing instead of jumping. Bud sucks at jumping. He's a shit jumper. Oh, that's um, that's uh, your your description is just sounding more and more off the longer you talk. Is it hey, a man. platformer or are you are you bad at jumping? So I mean, okay. imagine this. Okay, imagine that they yep. made Super Mario sixty four two, and you could it's not this game. You controlled <laughs> each limb independently, and you couldn't jump very well. That'd be a so they really, made that game. That'd be a they really shitty N64 platformer, even if it was made in 2015. They made that game. It's called Mount Your Friends. Um, so it's not really it, it's not really a jumping platformer as much as it's a climbing. I'm gonna I need to put simulator. That, I, I'm gonna like I'm gonna put that somewhere and just be like official quote. Like I, ho- I want them to put that on like the box for Grow Home if it goes to consoles. And it just mm. says, like, on the back, the best platformer since Mount Your Friends from Ryan Meyer. Like, that's, that's true. what I wanted to say on the back of the box. No, that, that's what it says. Um, no, it's it's not really a platformer in the sense that you are jumping. It's a platformer in the sense that you are trying to... It's like, okay, it's a little bit more like an upside-down platformer. Uh, because you are climbing up, and then there's a lot of falling... And then hmm. you fall, and you kind of glide like a little flying squirrel, and you latch onto a rock, and then you're climbing and crawling underneath a rock or something. Or, like, there's these floating rocks in the sky, so, like, you'll climb up and then fall and then grab onto a rock and then climb under it to get a crystal or whatever. You know, it's it's not it's not a jump platformer, but there's it, it feels like that. I don't know. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, it almost seems... I almost feel like giving it a shot, and I didn't really feel like like doing that before. Uh, you should. I, it's it's $8. eight whole dollars. Yeah, but eight like... Whole dollars. I have so many games that I already have that I need to play. It's ridiculous. And I wind up mm. just playing games I've already played a hundred times before mm-hmm. anyways. Mm-hmm. So that's... I mean, we're getting too far away from... I, I, that that those are some, those are my demons that I have to tackle with personally. But I want to hear about the time that pixels made you sad. So okay, I can tell you about this. So as you know, as you personally, not you, the listeners, you will know mm-hmm. afterwards. After I say the words, um, I I like Pokemon. Yeah, you, know, you sure yeah. do. I sure do. Oh, we get. Uh, oh man, we can talk about Nuzlocks. We are. Oh, I, God we damn are. It. We are. Um, I. You, <sighs> okay. You hate. You hate those. I hate they're the dumbest thing. I think I love them to bits and pieces. Um, so again, for those uninitiated, um, a Nuzlocke is a self-imposed set of rules uh, when you start up a Pokemon game, and the basics are: the first thing you see, you catch it, and if you don't catch it, you're fucked. Um, you don't get to catch anything else on that route. And then the second rule is if it faints, it dies, and you have to either release it or put it in a box never to be touched again. Um, I just think it's... Which one do you do? I, do I release or do I... Yeah. I... Uh, it depends. Sometimes I put them in a box because 
Um, I like that Pokemon, mm-hmm. and I'll shove it in my Poke Bank. Oh, I was, of course you have a Poke Bank. I do. I'm not. At one point, they required you to pay money for that. I don't know if I'm still doing that or not. But I can definitely still put things in my Poke Bank. You're probably so who you're knows? Probably paying money for that. I have no fucking clue. Um, but I started a new one on um, Omega Ruby because um, I hate Gen Three. And that's also something that makes you mad. Uh, I mean, what do you hate about Gen Three? Is it the the, the gameplay? I mean, is it I, like? I just think it's like the most forced generation. If I if that's a way to describe it. So you hate the the Pokemon themselves? Is what you're saying? Yeah, they're just not that good. Just not that good. Um, that's just like your opinion, man. Yeah, I know. I, I know. Re- refer you to. I, I'm gonna. Get, I'm getting like really esoteric now. We're just getting really what? deep into Pokemon. I'm turning hey, that's into fine. Pokemon cast right now. Hey, that's fine. Tropius is flying in grass, and he's a Brontosaurus with bananas hanging from his neck, and that's awesome. There's always the diamond in the rough, man. That's true. What about Whiskash? Whiskash. Um, that dude's that, a motherfucker. It's a fat. First of all, water and ground is like the best type combinations ever. Yeah, Marshdomp. And yeah, Marshdomp's stupid. Swamper. They're not catfish. Do you see the do you see the problem that they're not that, catfish? I, I guess. And my favorite Pokemon is for that generation, Flygon. Um yeah. I don't know why. It's I know, just, he's your bro. Just is. But yeah, no, I started a, a Nuzlocke and so you know, you're we're on, walking around and you're like, Oh cool, I got a gym. I'm gonna fight a gym now, and you get in there, and your only water type is half bird because it's Wingle, and you're just like, oh shit, she's got rocks, I'm screwed, and then the Wingle you loved gets murdered by Rock Tomb, and you say to yourself, why did it? Why did you forsake me, my lord? That's one hell of a way to go, man. Yeah, no. Every time I play a Nuzlocke, it makes me really, really sad, because I genuinely feel for these pixels that I have under my care because I'm supposed to protect them. Yeah, I think that that's, that's an interesting thing that you do to yourself. You're kind of making your own rules like that. I think that's mm-hmm. sort of fascinating. But Yes. You, you, so you're saying you got Omega Ruby and you never actually played it? You just nope. turned it on and started a Nuzlocke? Yes. I did that. Um, it's it, you know it's a remake. It's like well I already know what's gonna happen in here. It's not like I have to experience the story again, you know. So I'm just like, eh, True. screw it. Let's get in there. Let's catch only the one thing, and that's great. Uh, why didn't you just use a, a different game then? Like use a game you already had. Uh, uh, reasons, I. <laughs> I just I, I I have problems. Yeah, I have problems. That, that, is, I have, that is evident. I have to own new things. At least as they pertain to Pokemon. Uh yes. Most most definitely. All right. Did you play anything else this week though? Besides um, um Pokemon in such a way that hmm. like, you claim it makes you happy but then you're also like, "Oh, but then I was sad." But then I was sad. Um I messed around with Evolve a little bit, um, barely, not a lot. Um, I it's yeah, it's you, weird. You once told me that you were like hyped for that game, and I said, I was. Oh, "Excuse me, someone is hyped, and like someone in the world is hyped for Evolve." I was, yeah, I think, like it's uh, it's completely I was, off my radar. It's been I there. was super hyped for Evolve um, when I saw like you know E3 trailers and and you know I did both of the open betas mm-hmm. um, that was cool uh, but I don't know it came out and I, I don't know I played it for 20 minutes I played as the monster which is the only fun part because it's it's sort of like um, it's sort of like playing, you know, Dota 2 or something, and your entire team doesn't know how to play their class, which I don't really play Dota, so I don't fucking know. But, um, yeah, okay, sure. You know, it's, it's, someone doesn't know that you need to put arenas down to put the monster in there. It's the same thing as, like, someone doesn't know that you don't need three people in the first lane. You don't need that. Oh, well, the, the whole concept of laning is much more basic than 
do I know what an arena is, but I see yeah. your point. Uh, I, I think I just, the reason I wasn't hyped for that game is because I already saw that, I saw the future, and I saw all those things happening, and I knew how frustrated I was going to be, and mm. I just started, off, like, immediately just was dreading that, and I wasn't into it. Because, like, five people, I, I, I don't, I don't do, I mean, playing online with people you don't know in any game it can is so hit or miss, especially one that requires teamwork. And then yeah, it's al- definitely evident. I'm already not a big fan of asynchronous gameplay. Ever since Mario Party One, in that game <laughs> where one person's in a Bowser suit and everyone else just beats the crap out of them. Yep. I. I was that like traumatized me. Like I See, was just I like happen- I don't believe in asynchronous gameplay. Besides, like say, Nintendo Land. I happen to love asynchronous gameplay. In every single way, um, it's it's one of the, like the tr- I think I feel like it's vastly unexplored um, in video games, but in board games it happens all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Like um, oh boy, I'm struggling to think of an example. Um, Space Cadets. Space Cadets is a great example of that. Thank you. Welcome Nick. to the Tabletop Cast. Tabletop Cast 2015. Um, so Space Cadets is a game where you guys are on a spaceship and everybody has like a job. They're like us. One guy's the pilot. One guy's the weapons guy. One guy is the shields man. And every time you do something, everybody has to like play a little mini game to figure out if you ran into asteroids and you got shot in the butt and all that shit. It's really hard. It's really hard, but it's so fun and interesting and the part that is great is everybody has a job but you're all collaborating towards a thing which in Evolve sucks Mm -hmm. (laughs) because you're a lot of times people don't want to work together they just want to shoot the thing Um, and if they can't like someone who plays as the medic really doesn't shoot the thing they really don't and neither does support that much Um, they do a little bit more but um the only guy who actually shoots the thing is Assault mm-hmm. um, and a little bit of the other classes in varying capacities, but it's mainly the Assault. So he has all of the glory. And then if you get a shitty team with a medic who doesn't heal or a support guy who doesn't do his thing, uh, they just suck it up for everybody. And the monster just trounces you and you lose every time. Yeah, so it, uh, it's just not fun. I, I think a lot of that, I think a lot of that is from an even more basic online gaming thing, or even in games that don't require such strict teamwork as Evolve. Mm-hmm. People mm-hmm. just they go in there and they're just like, "This is how I can. This is how this is going to be fun for me, or this is how I will earn personal glory, or something like that." If you play Call of Duty online, and I've played, oh. Um, decades of Call of Duty Online. Like, I've played seriously played, like, so, so many hours of Call of Duty Online. But in a game like that, it's, people will be, like, they'll be like, oh, well, I'm playing a game mode where if we don't capture the points, we'll lose. Mm, And then they'll be like, oh, but if I just sit here in this corner and just shoot people with guns, then I get to summon a helicopter, and then I get more kills, and I, like, get, like, I feel good. My, like, pants start bulging like it makes me happy Ooh. and yeah. like I've I've played games of this game mode domination where you have to capture the points or we will just get gunned down for like 10 mm. minutes like just we can't catch a break like we're just constantly dying but we'll still win because we're just throwing our dead bodies on the point and all, these right. other, all the idiots on the other team are just too busy killing us to, to play the objective mm-hmm. and so I I think even that, I mean, that's obviously a huge problem. People aren't even playing the game type. I can't even imagine what Evolve is like if they don't fully understand what they're supposed to be doing. And it's like the yeah. whole point is like just doing, you know, you look at like, you go to like Icy Veins and it's like, here's how you have the best character and wow. It's like, if you get to, here's the order of things you have to do to be a good trapper. Execute the plan. And if people aren't doing that, or they don't care, or they just want to do whatever makes them feel good, then that's going to be a, a goddamn nightmare. It is, for the most part, I've found. I ha- I've probably played, I don't know, maybe 
30 matches between the betas and the full release, and it's just like, if you don't get a good team who knows what's going on, it's just not fun, and you sit there for 15 to 20 minutes just getting your fucking ass kicked. Um, Especially with, like, some of the harder to track monsters you know there's like the wraith which is very stealthy mm-hmm. um and it that's where your hunter or your trapper comes in with your little dog and she's like okay cool i got this uh, i know what's going on i need to get the dog over to the place where the tracks are and then they'll find him and then they put the arena down so he can't get outside <clears throat> never happens um I, I want to like that game but i'm pretty sure i do not like that game I, I think human nature just ruins that game for everyone. And yeah, that's, that's absolutely extremely sad. Uh, have you played any other games this week? Nope, that was a lot of video games I played this week, it's which like, is like a surprisingly high number. It's like, a, like that's like four video games. That was a lot of video games. I'm usually good for like a half a video game. Yeah, you've been doing like work on this and stuff. Yeah, and it's been that's taking up some of my free time, but I'm hoping. Most of the, that stuff's out of the way, and I can just play video games nonstop forever. That's my goal. I, Speaking I, of playing video games for nonstop forever, mm-hmm. what did you play this week, Nick? Um, I played a couple of things. I played a lot of Nintendo games. I'm realizing, I like Nintendo games. Um, and I kind of like, I kind of go through these weird phases. And like a certain point, I was like glued to. My you know, like my side room where I have all my consoles. And I was playing like Xbox One game like right at the end of year last year. So I had nothing but Xbox One games like mm-hmm. Shadow of Mordor, um, Advanced Warfare, Far Cry Four, just like all day every day. Um, and then like I started like moving back into my room and playing more PC games. And for whatever reason, the past couple of weeks I've just been all about Nintendo games. Yeah. So I've been you know I've still been playing some Smash Bros. Um, kind of different groups of friends. I, I mean to play it like more by myself, but it after I like did a lot of playing with the 3DS version and completed like the first two full sets of challenges, and it just uh, sucks. Yeah, it, it's just like it gets the magic kind of dies. Uh, and then, like, the Wii U version came out, and I was just so accustomed to everything in the game from playing the 3DS version. It yep. was really hard to appreciate everything was that was in that game. Yeah, it sucks because they, they made... Well, they didn't make you, clearly, but um, they had you um, play the 3DS version, and, you know, you unlock all this stuff, and they, all these custom moves, and you didn't get shit. They want you to have both. Like They want like, you to have you both. They want you to if you have both. So like they're they not want... they're not even like oh well we're releasing two different versions of the games because not everyone has both consoles it's like they want us to have both they do but then they don't make it easy because you're like oh I have all this neat stuff that I have to unlock again this sucks yeah it, it just just crazy because if they had just released the Wii U game like they'd just been like boom just dropped in our laps and it was there it would be have been the greatest game ever. I would still be playing it. I would not have stopped playing it. It was just would have absorbed my life. It, yes. It's just, it looks so good. And if all the stuff that was in it that I didn't know about was like a surprise to me, all the new Great. characters and like everything in HD <clears throat> and it was just with a GameCube controller and everything, like it, it would have been incredible. But it would have been. Eight player Smash. Eight player Smash. The 3DS version. I feel after all of the Justice Settled is forty dollar Mewtwo DLC is what that is. Yeah, if they hadn't released it first, no one would have bought it. No one would have bought it. But I think they also may have. Okay, so there's like two two ideas. Is it's like they wanted they they wanted to sell more Wii U's with Smash Bros. Mm-hmm. and I think that having it come out on the 3DS first may have killed some of those sales because people played the game and they said well what do I need the Wii U version for if I played this shit on the 3DS and that's oh, yeah, 100% exactly. true but a lot of people also say that the people who bought Smash Bros the Wii U already had Wii U's because they knew Smash Bros was going to be on it or they bought it right. for Pikmin 3 or they bought it for Mario Kart 8 yeah. or 
I know I actually know people who did that. I also know somebody who bought it for Smash Bros. But mm. I, I bought my Wii for Smash Bros. But I bought it two years ago. You know? Yeah. Like it's it's okay. A new Nintendo com- console comes out. There's gonna be a Zelda. There's gonna be a Mario, and there's gonna be a Smash Bros. So get this shit unlocked. So you too. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah, I mean, I bought mine pretty prematurely, which I oh, was absolutely. actually very interesting to watch the games come out. I was like more invested yes. in it instead of me just like sitting back and being like, "Oh, Wii U game came out, cool." Oh, now there's oh, like cool. seven Wii U games that are good. I'm gonna buy it. I just like I had it way too early. I had way too early. You, I'm pretty yeah, sure I had, had that it, thing like you had it way earlier than I did actually. Like two weeks after launch or some shit. I'm like, I'm gonna yeah, get it. you got it. You got you've got some been buying your consoles pretty uncomfortably close to launch lately in a way that I'm I not have. comfortable with. Like I I don't I don't buy them too close to launch. It makes me feel I have weird. money and I'm just like I'm gonna have money again if I buy this console. I just think the dorkiest thing ever is when people like they'll just, like go on Reddit or something and be like, Hey, look at this look at my sweet haul and they'll just buy like a PS four the day it comes out with like all the PS four games that are available and it's <laughs> like NBA two K fourteen and uh Knack and MLB The Show, and, like, all these games, it's like, no one, there's no way that guy actually was going to want to play all of those games. He just bought every game, so he'd feel like he wasted his money less on buying a launch day PS4. See, I bought Nat because I legitimately thought that was going to be a good game. Boy, were you wrong. Boy, was I wrong. That game is shit. Yeah. Uh, um, it looks kind of cool. It was, like, this weird, like, 3D oh, it looked great. voxel thing they got going, but like it looks fantastic. That's a great looking game. That game sucks shit. It is so bad. <laughs> that's that's what I've I've heard. Yeah, uh, although they nice. didn't exactly they didn't say it sucked shit, but they've been people have been generally unimpressed by that. No, game. that was the official like GameSpot um, review. It just said this it's game sucks shit, out and of they 10. gave it a two uh, out of ten. Ugh, brutal. Uh, yeah, no, it sucks. Um. I played some other Nintendo games though. I, I, yeah. I went a weird tangent about Smash, but uh, I played a lot of uh, Punch Out, the Wii, oh, the Wii out. one, uh, and I never played it when it was out on the Wii. That game is really freaking good. Um, basically, my friend and I were sitting around drinking beer, and then we're like, "Hey, what game should we play?" And he had Punch Out, so we just like started a new thing in Punch Out, and we just played punch out and just beating up racist effigies because <laughs> that's what punch is, out is is that game i haven't played that one is that game a updated punch out or is it new guys in it so it's um how how can i describe it it's not it's, it's definitely updated uh it's not a remake it's it's not a it's yeah. I mean, I guess it's a remake. It's like a reimagining of the concepts of Punch Out. It's like you, you still fight like Glass Joe yeah. and all those guys. I think every guy from the original game is in it, and they add like four new ones. And Mike Tyson. And I'm not talking about Mike Tyson when I say this. Mike Tyson. No, I mean that. The official Nintendo canon is that game never existed. It's, That's definitely true. Uh, Mr. Dream, or whatever his name is. Yeah, it's Mr. Dream. It's Punch Out featuring Mr. Dream. And, and not Mike Tyson. Definitely, no, it's Mike Tyson. Definitely not Mike Tyson. No, that's, what, that's the title. It's Punch Out featuring Mr. Dream and definitely not Mike Tyson because we don't want to get sued. That's uh, fucking hilarious. It, it, the, the game is just it's super fun. It, it, it's, more, um, com- it's a little bit more complex than the original one. Um, because you can like the way the directions you dodge matter, and like if you duck a punch versus blocking it. I mean, there's some of that in the first game, in the original game. Uh, but also like punching with either left or right, and also I mean the the body shots versus face shots or matter mm-hmm. in the NES version. But it, it's just more it's a more complex game, and uh, but it, main, it maintains a lot of the feel of the original game too. That yeah. uh, it's this really weird memorization type of thing, and it's really this like uphill battle. It, it like it mm-hmm. almost reminds me of a game like Dark Souls. I almost it would lump those two things together. It's like super hard, thing. and you like try and you try and you try, and you just die so many times until you like learn the patterns or like you know what to do. Like experiment with different things, you know what to do, and then like if you fight the same guy and punch out for long enough, like I did, 
I got to like the last guy in the first set because you fight all the guys twice, mm. and it's drastically harder the second time. But I got to the last guy uh, in the first set, and I had to try fighting him like a hundred times. Maybe maybe not a hundred, but like fifty times at least. And then mm-hmm. by the time I figured out how to beat him, I beat the f like I kicked his ass. Like it was. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it was a TKO in the first round, which is, yeah. I mean, it, at that point, you're looking at how many, how long, how many seconds it took you to beat him. But that's as good as you could beat somebody at that point. And mm-hmm. that was so cathartic. I was like, oh, I was freaking out. I, I was, it, 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 and it really makes you feel good when you win. Like, yeah, when you totally. win and like, that punch connects, dude, it's great. You got to play it. I'm pretty sure you bought it. I I I probably bought it. I buy a lot of things. Yeah, all those those Wii games that came out. Um, I got everything except for Super Mario Galaxy Two because I have that game and I don't care to have it again. But they I'm were pretty sure I forgot to buy Metro Prime Trilogy. Oh, dude, we had a discussion about this. I said like specifically, we... like it ends in like two days, and you should do it. Yeah, I forgot. Oh man, I love I Metro should... Prime Trilogy. I'll never play it. I hate Metro Prime. I don't know why. I think you should give it another shot, knowing what you know now. Yeah, maybe. I am a. I am when a, it came out when we were like sixteen or something. Yeah, I'm. I'm like a generally more open-minded person. Yeah, it was like the first game came out when we were like thirteen. Yeah, it was disgusting. <laughs> so <laughs> gross. Okay. Uh, um. Okay. Can I tell you about more Nintendo games? I want you to. So yes. Um. Okay. Uh. So NES Remix. Uh. That oh. game came out like early last year, middle of last year, or something like that. Yeah. And I um, didn't care about that game. Like, I saw it, and I was like, that's a neat thing that they did. And I, I, I mean, I still hold by that that statement, that it's a neat thing that Nintendo did. Yep. I think it's a cool idea um, that they took, try to breathe some new life into NES games, although some would argue that they don't need to. I just think that uh, yeah. for a modern, they're kind of spicing it up for a modern o- audience, and they recognize that those games are definitely still valid, that they still mm-hmm. work, and mm-hmm. they're still fun. So they just wanted to do something a little bit different with it. And I think they may have made it just a little bit too different. It's like not quite. Did you ever play? Okay, did you ever play WarriorWare? Oh yeah, sure. Do you remember? I don't. I don't remember. I think he was in the first one. Mm-hmm. Um, do you ever like Nine Volt? The little kid. Oh, you stick the fucking nine volt battery on your tongue? Yeah, totally. no, that's that's a different game entirely. Oh. I'm talking about. S- sorry, the character's name is nine. I believe the character's name is nine volt, but all of his mini games or his micro games were classic Nintendo themed. Okay, uh, including like it would just like make you play, or, like put you into one one of Super Mario Bros. Mm-hmm. and just be like find the mushroom, but you had like four seconds to do it, or like jump on two Goombas. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's very it's almost identical. Like I, those things I also described are things that happen in NES remix. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but they don't. It's weird. They don't really give you a good chunk of the game. Have you played it before? NES remix. It's one of those things that I bought, and I'm pretty sure I never. Opened. Uh, I think I think I did see that you owned it. Yeah, uh, I it, I have mixed feelings about it because the, when they give you the little challenge of mm-hmm. jump on three Goombas. It's like they, they give you just like a really small chunk of the level that you're not able to like appreciate the game as a game, but they also give you enough of it that it's not quite that really crazy micro game type thing where you're just going in there and doing the thing. Yeah, it's like a little bit more deep. It's like it's just this really weird like wishy washy. It's not deep enough, but also too deep at the same time. If that mm-hmm. makes any sense. Yeah, it does. Some of the stuff is just weird. Like you get like four stages of like you know, like the Legend of Zelda, and the, it's like, the challenge is part is four stages, and the first one mm-hmm. is just like, walk in and get the sword, and then it's like, alright, now fight the boomerang, and and now, get the white sword, and it's like, it literally just like, puts you on the same screen as the white sword, and you just have to like, walk past the minotaur thing, because you have like, eight hearts, and it doesn't matter, and just walk in and get the white sword. Yeah. And it's sort of, it's sort of weird. I, I found myself playing it like a, a bunch. Uh, that game's actually kind of has more content than I thought it would. You have to, you know, go in there and get, like, three stars by doing it fast enough, and 
the number of stars you have adds up to unlock new stages in the the remix uh, categories, which kind of mix up the games even more. Sometimes like combining two games, uh, mm-hmm. I, like uh, at one point, I'm pretty sure you have to play the first level of Donkey Kong as Link, which what? means you have to like hit the barrels with your sword instead of jumping over them. Yeah, yeah, uh, which sounds kind of cool, actually. Yeah, no, I I think I opened that game and then it looked pretty deep. Like you had, there was a lot of stuff in there, and then they made another one. Yeah, they, they used completely different games for it, so I can kind oh, of see where they were coming right. from, where that that made sense for them to do that. Yeah, um, I, I think it's an in, inherently good idea. Uh, it actually has a lot of content, but at the end of the day, um, you know, I just don't want to play baseball for the NES. Nobody does, or like super, or like the original Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong for the Game Boy. Um, was really great. They added so much stuff to that game. Mm-hmm. Donkey Kong for the NES plays like trash. When you <laughs> when it on the when it's on the same console as Super Mario Brothers, or, or like if you look at Mario Brothers or Donkey Kong, those games play like trash. And that's yeah. Uh, like, that's not just my opinion. That's an objective look at the facts. And so that they make me play those games, it's a little bit frustrating when I could be playing Super Mario Bros. So. I usually just played like through all the Super Mario Brothers and all the Zelda ones, and sometimes yeah. like Balloon Fight because I think that game's all right. And Ooh, then I cool. play the remix stages because those are cool. Yeah, that uh, sounds um, neat. I I should probably like look into that. Yeah, you at should, some point you should fire it up in about thirty minutes to an hour. You'll know if it's for you or not. Yeah, I, I mean the only, about right. the only reason I got it is I was never really impressed with it. I I saw it and I was like, that looks cool. I don't ever want to pay money for it. Luckily. Hmm. Club Nintendo imploded, and I had a whole ton of coins. Because when Club oh, Nintendo yeah. first started, I was so stingy with my... Well, not when I first started. When I first got into it, I redeemed, like, a whole backlog of Nintendo games, because this was only, like, three years ago or something that I started registering everything. Yeah. And I started just saving up coins. because uh, And, it, like, I would start racking them up, new systems, whatever, and then every month they'd be like, you can have these things. And I'd look at them and I'd go, these are not worth my coins. I do not want these things. Because <laughs> someday there will be some some grand thing I can use my coins on. And I will be glad that I saved them all for. And boy, it did happened. that happen. Yeah, it boy, happened. That happened. They yeah. had over 100 different games that you could get with that stuff. So I, Big time. I, got, I just went in and just got all the games I kind of want but I never wanted to pay money for. Like Harmo Knight for the 3DS. Hey, I, I played that, that game. You know that Did game? Did you? Yeah. No, I don't. I don't know that game. Um, it's by Game Freak. You mean like Pokemon? Yes. I mean like Pokemon. They don't make anything else. Yes, they do. They made Harbor Knight for the 3DS. It's How this little that? cartoony, kind of like half-assed, anim- weird animation style. It's like Western, crappy looking. Um, and it's like a, a rhythm puzzle platformer. Not a puzzle platformer, but like a ryth- rhythm platformer slash auto runner. Mm-hmm. So... Your Harmo Knight just like runs through the the world, and enemies will pop up, or you'll need to jump to collect notes, and like uh-huh. you kind of make like beeps and boops when you do those things that kind of go with the song. I'm really good at beeps and boops, and I really like rhythm games, but I mostly like rhythm games where I can either add my own music or I recognize the music. Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm playing like Rock Band, I don't really find a lot of joy from playing some song I never heard of. It's it's all right, but that's not what I find fun. I find fun. I do once in a while if the song is like really hard and fun. It has to be yeah. hard and fun. And there, there have been plenty of songs I've played in Rock Band and Guitar Hero that I didn't know existed, and I like them now because I played them there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that that's another. I mean, that's that's one thing. But like, uh, sometimes or most of the time when I'm playing Rock Band, I'm just like, damn, I want to play Danny California because that song's dope. And when Everybody you play loves it, Danny California. When you play it, it's not that hard, so you can just kind of like rock out and like, yeah, like it's just so much fun because it's like the right balance of like it's not too boring, it's not too hard, like that's what makes me happy when I'm playing rhythm games. It's like play music I like. So oh, yeah, the music absolutely. that's in there is kind of lame. Like I can um, see like if I was younger, I'd be like, oh cool, this music's like fun. But I'm not. I'm a grown ass man, so I, I find it a little bit hard to appreciate. But is it um, custom, like like original tracks? Not custom. It, it, original. it is original tracks, as far as I can tell. Um, mm-hmm. you no, know, the music is pretty simple in a way that you can kind of tell, like where things are coming, 
like without even knowing what the song sounds like, you can tell like what it's supposed to sound like and where you should kind of jump or hit. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's effective in that regard as a rhythm game. The thing it does have is that because it's made by Game Freak, they have bonus levels with Pokemon music. Ah! But I think there's only like five of them. Fuck. And the first one is just like the gym theme, uh-huh. like being in a gym. And okay. I played that level like a bunch of times, and it was super fun. But I don't know if I feel like trudging through the whole game just to experience those like five levels. Yeah, especially because I, not, like I described the one type of game, the one type mm-hmm. of stage where you're you're running and you're jumping and you're hitting things with the beat. There's also another type of stage that's like sometimes used for boss fights. That's like it gives you like a a count like a dun 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 dun. Hit, yep. hit, hit, jump, hit, and uh, then you have to wait for the beat to start and then do, like, exactly what you just heard, like, memorize it and then do it back in rhythm. I that find terrible. I find that to be extremely annoying. And that sounds terrible. And it's very, very frustrating. Yeah. And, like, the first boss of that game, I died, like, three times where I had not even failed a single time up until mm-hmm. then. Mm-hmm. And it frustrated the crap out of me and made me almost just rage quit. Because oh, I just didn't have fun with that particular, I didn't have a particular large amount of fun uh, with that sort of gameplay. Yeah, and that sounds like something I would hate. I hate yeah. remembering. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not too complex, because like I said, I I think it, it might be a game kind of for children. Oh, it's well, a, it's a pretty early good. 3DS game. Well, it so. means Game Freak, so... Yeah. yeah, they make games exclusively for children that grown men don't play. I definitely don't play any of them. No, never. We not, definitely didn't talk one. about playing one earlier. Nope. I'm trying to think of any other games I got free from Club Nintendo that I, I give a crap about. I think I um, picked up Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D. Oh, I, I had that from my Platinum status like last year or something like that. Yeah, I didn't hit Platinum last year and I wanted to kill myself. That game's fun. Yeah, no, I'm excited to play it again. Um, I like the Wii one, but it was I didn't appreciate the waggle. And then you have to um, be in front of a Wii to play it. There's that too. And that kind of um, sucks. Where I feel like I I honestly feel like those. Um, what is it? Is it? It's not level five. What's the, what's the retro. studio who does retro? Best known um, for their work on Metroid Prime. Yeah. Uh, no, that game's bad. But um, I I you don't I, like, I, like that game. You mean? Oh, no, no, that game's bad. No, that game's bad. Um. Donkey Kong, the, the, the two Donkey Kong games they put out, uh, I feel like they w- would both be better on handhelds, even though, like, the Tropical Freeze looked great um, in Look, HD. Tropical that Freeze was... is a handheld if you're in your house, and you only play handheld games in your house, so Tropical Freeze for the so Wii U. So suck it, Ryan? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying you can play <laughs> Tropical Freeze on the Wii U and just pretend it's a, a portable game. But you know what I mean, though. I do. Yeah, um, but they also like, they did this thing when they re-released. They just look like portable games. When they re- re-released the first one, they also made it easier. Great. They gave you, or like, actually, they did include the original mode, but the new mode it was like made more for a portable gaming style. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, it's, although the levels in that game are still huge, um, they're awesome. The idea is that you're supposed to kind of be able to play it in smaller chunks. Because they also mm-hmm. don't like you staring at your 3DS for very long before they go, hey, it's been a while. Maybe you should take a break. Well, you should just play with the 3D off because 3D is garbage. Um, have you tried the 3D and the new 3DS? Because apparently it works better. Yeah, I still hate 3D. Still hate it. It works really good. Like I the 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 IR part um, where it's keeping track of where you are and making sure that the 3D is always enabled in your direction. It works pretty well, I found. Um, but you just but don't I like just, it. It makes my eyeballs um, sad. Want to turn inside out and fall out of my head. So um, I hate it. That's I, that's sad. I feel bad for you. Um, also, for the record, Metroid Prime is a ninety-seven Metacritic rating and is therefore a good game. Um, Metacritic is not the scale I use. I use Ryan Critic. Ryan Critic says that Ryan, that game Ryan got Critic a says I don't like that game, but Metacritic says it's good. And yeah, you're you're not. I'm not saying you have to like it. But if you don't recognize that it's good, I will sucker punch you. Good uh, luck. Okay, I, I played one more Nintendo game that I can think of right now, because um, I don't think I got really anything else I've played yet. 
from mm. from uh from Club Nintendo. I got like um Super Mario Land two, Legend of the Six Golden Coins because I remember that shit from my childhood. I do too. And I got Golden Sun for the Wii U because that's one of my favorite games ever. And although I own it uh in original cartridge, I wanted it mm. again. And I, I also was kind of running out of games I wanted. I didn't. It was like I either had to get that or Doctor Luigi. Don't and, get Doctor Luigi. Yeah, I really didn't want Doctor Luigi. It's like I didn't. I didn't want shitty Puyo Pop. Yeah. Right. Um, Fuck. Uh, but I've been playing The Legend of Zelda: Majora's Mask 3D. Oh. And that game's pretty great. I mean, I've I, I inherently I'm a, I have a biased opinion on the subject because going yeah into you it, do. Going into it, I was like, I already knew I loved uh, Majora's Mask. It's, once again, one of my favorite games ever. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of an interesting Zelda game. They tried some, they took some big risks with that game. I think it paid off. I thought it was super mm-hmm. interesting because no game, no Zelda game has ever played like like it before or ever again. And there's something to be said about that. Yeah, no, that's true. And I bought that remake... And yeah, because why wouldn't you? I mean, it's it's going to be in an effort to get myself to like that game because I don't. I don't see why not. Um, I just I I never got into the mask thing. Um, I don't. Everyone's everyone particularly... wants to talk about the masks. Like everyone's like thinks like the masks are just a thing. Like there's nothing to get into. Yeah, but the it's the it's the whole uh, it's like it's half the point. I, I mean, it's a it's probably more than half the point but they're just like items Things, they're just like, items. i don't know they're yeah, ways to interact with the world uh, it's not like some really weird complex system but it's just i don't know i just sometimes you just want to be link i don't want to be a fucking goron man or a zora who swims in the part where you're the, the thing i hate about legend of zelda is when they make you be a thing that's not linked Dude, for that fucking part lasts, three hours like, of the game that part lasts like 30 minutes that's too long. That's no. You're. Lo- Did you play Twilight Princess? Uh, no, because it made you be a goddamn. Yeah, wolf I was gonna say you spent like game. legit four hours of gameplay minimum as a whole wolf. game, not the whole game. Wolf. No, because that game gets outrageously good after the wolf part when you go into a Yeti's you're, house. You're you're a wolf, and there is a stupid naked lizard lady no with lizard. a dumb mask on your back, and she's got like a weird glowy hand, and she's like, "You're a wolf. Fucking deal with it." Yeah, that's think that's that's uh, Twilight Princess in a nutshell, right there. Now, I understand what you're saying, but that's not what happens in Majora's Mask. You're a Deku shrub for like 30 minutes, and it's I think it's an actually a very nifty introduction to the game. I guess um, it shows you around Clock Town and shows you a little bit of the workings of what's going on there, and it's just cool. Like it. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I was talking to another friend of mine about it, and you know, we were kind of the same thing came up, and I was just like, "There's just so much micromanagey bullshit in that game with all the schedules, and you have to find this guy on this day, but then go back in time and like brush his cow." This, this, that's not whatever what happens. That's fun. No, I think that's terrible. Why? I think that's. I don't know. I think it's so. Forced and just, what do you mean forced? Do, it just feels like they're making you do that because that's not a game. That's just not there's just not enough game in there. So let's just fill it full of mess and lawn lawn ranch. You don't have to do that stuff, really. You do you don't? You do. I mean, it's the whole point. You don't have of to the do game. the ocean and swamp spider houses, and you don't have to do Kafi and Andrew's quest. But that's such an amazing quest line. It's so complex. It, it it really that Majora's Mask brings that world to life, and like Ocarina of Time, they were just like there were people in that world, but like you just walked past them and you said, "Hey, you're not a monster I have to kill, so you don't even matter," and you just kept Great. walking. Like in Majora's Mask, it brings the whole world to life. It gives a, it gives a name and a face to every character, and like makes them matter. And you have to interact with people, and all the all your hearts are coming from heart pieces, besides four of them. So you're like, there's tons of stuff to do out in the open world, and it's super duper interesting. You're not just running from dungeon to dungeon, getting an item, and then using it to go to the next one. It's like way more complex than that. Yeah, I'm. I, I've been. Pl- I played a couple of Zelda games 
semi recently, you know, maybe within the past couple months, and I'm kind of slowly coming to the realization that maybe I don't like Zelda games. If that's possible, um, I mean, Zelda game Zelda is a very likable series of games because um, that formula I just described it it works. Yeah, but I just like to see it get messed with sometimes, like um, Link I mean, to the Past yeah. or not Link to the Past, Link Between Worlds. That was good. I like that game. I didn't beat it, but I like what they did to that game because it didn't feel so just go to this place. This boss is weak to the hammer. Guess where you get the hammer in this boss's fucking mm-hmm. dungeon? Yeah. You know, over yeah, and they, over again. It's it's like a lot of this kind of, kind of the same ideas that they attempted with Majora's Mask, and they just mm-hmm. it's a bit, they're better at it now. Um, but they I still really appreciate like the whole like I said they bring the world to life in Majora's Mask, and like everyone matters. And it's like really cool. The, the, yeah. the changes they made to the 3DS version um, are really, really good. They made a couple, like a lot of quality of life things. Um, yeah, that's true. And I don't want to, you know, I'm not saying like, oh, this version's good. You should play this version because it's got this and that. I, I think they're they're all good, and this is just a superior version because it's easier to play. Um, so, for instance, um, you get the. Or like the owl statues that you can teleport between, yep. they're uh, they're not like restore points. They're not suspend points, mm-hmm. and, and like you don't have to save only by resetting time, which I that was a huge flaw in the first game. It made the game Absolutely. almost impossible to play under certain situations. Like you really had to devote a lot of time to it. And I was a child when I played it, and I had that kind of time to commit to it. Mm-hmm. So that was that worked for me. I can see why other people would have trouble with it. You can only save when you go back in time, and then you're back in time, and you're fucked. Uh, yeah. So now you can save when, wherever you want. The game actually makes you save the first time you see an owl statue. You get near it, and it's like... It doesn't make you save, but it says, hey, you want to save? It like shows you this is how you save. Mm-hmm. And they also made the bank lady like right next to the owl statue in Clock Town. I like that. Which is kind of cool, because I didn't realize how much... <clears throat> I was like, oh, shit, I don't have money, and I had to go get money, or I had to deposit money before I reset time or something like that, and it's, like, super See, helpful. that's bullshit. That, that. I understand that you go back in time, and you have less things than you had when you go forward in time, but there's no reason why you should have to give your money to a lady um, to hold on to, and timey-wimey magic stuff, boom, it's there. It's not, even... it's not magic. You're just stealing from that lady. Every time you give her money... She says she puts like a stamp on your, or she stamps you on the forehead to know that it's you, and then like basically, you're telling her you go up to her and you're like, "Hey, I have eight hundred, I have eight hundred rupees in the bank," and she's like, "I don't remember seeing you in the past three days, but you must be telling the truth." So here's eight hundred rupees. That's real dumb. It's like a she's like a bank. It's like real dumb. You're not actually withdrawing the same eight hundred rupees that you put in there. That's not dumb. It, that's I think that it's super clever. It is sort of frustrating that you have to depo- you have to remember to deposit them before you go back. In yeah, because otherwise you, you them. fall through space and time, and the rupees fly out of you, and your bombs fly out of you, airs fly out of you, and you just have nothing when you reset time. You have fucking nothing. That's yeah, but that's such a minor qualm. You can pick all that stuff up so quickly. I'm lazy. You'll pick it up just automatically. Like you won't even realize you're picking it up. You'll just find a bush while you're fighting an enemy, and you'll just cut it. They, I guess I you know I'm gonna I used, try it that, again. That used to bother me when I was a kid. I was like, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't want to lose my stuff because I always took pride in Ocarina of Time having full stuff all of the time. Yeah, absolutely. And that was kind of great, but I didn't. So I was like scared about Majora's Mask and losing it, but I didn't seem to mind it because there's like a, just shit everywhere that you can just slash open and get stuff. They they did a couple other quality of life things like. Um, they give you like a hint. There's like a hint system. There's like a guy who can give you hints, and they give you the bomber's notebook, like automatically. Like uh, I think as soon as you become a human, they just give you the bomber's notebook, which is like the quest log for the game. Yeah. Before you had to co- come back to human and then do the bomber, like find all the bombers, the kids in the town again. You had to track them all down, and then they, and then once you were a human, they give you the notebook. So they just give it to you just straight up. You learn mm-hmm. the song of soaring sooner, and it, it's just generally, it's just easier to play. You get like 
X and Y are buttons for items. Mm-hmm. The ocarina has its own touchscreen thing. The camera has its own touchscreen thing. And then you get like two two touchscreen buttons for like other items. I usually use them for masks. Yeah. And it, it just it works well. Um, the only thing it scared scared the crap out of me when I first started playing. You're playing as a Deku shrub. I mm-hmm. was playing the game, and I realized that start and select didn't do anything. Really? And I was scared. I was worried. That you, like, broke your 3DS or something? No, that the game was just, like, <clears throat> shitty. And then oh. it, it actually turns out that once you're a human and you get the bomber's notebook, start and select open the bomber's notebook. Oh, but there's dear. still touchscreen buttons for, like, masks and items and gear mm-hmm. that works totally fine. Because mm-hmm. you can just tap that stuff with your finger. As long as you're not actively eating Cheetos... It's fine. It, it's, I exclusively eat Cheetos. And you exclusively eat. O- only eat them while you're playing 3DS. I know. Absolutely. But sometimes games are so good that we just have to change the way we act around them. Man, I, just, I can't stop eating Cheetos. I know. I don't know how you've stopped eating for the past hour just to, this, to talk to me about video games. Bear vs. Mancast, man. Yeah, it's a trip. I do that shit for you. I, I, I appreciate you for that, that you could stop shoving Cheetos into your mouth. You have a problem. God damn it. Yeah, I mean, I, I had a couple other things I wanted to talk about, but they're less important than Nintendo games, apparently. Hey, man, that's okay. I want to talk to you. I did want to talk to you real quick about, like, some of the, the free games that came out this month, like the PS4 stuff, like PS Plus and Xbox One. Video and, games. like, like iDarb and Puyo Pop Tetris. But I, yeah, that's, hey, man, those are fun, always next one. Fun games. Yeah, they're not going to be as fresh in our minds. Maybe we'll have some time to think about it and be like, wow, iDarb. Maybe it's not super fun. Yeah, I was really drunk when we played iDarb, so... Yeah, that game seemed um, super fun until you started, like, mashing the control stick, the right control stick, so hard that you broke the game. Yeah, I did do that. That was that was fun. I enjoyed that. Yeah, I'm I'm sure you're having a blast. I, I, thought, I, I thought it was super fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then, like, a couple of news things that were kind of interesting. Like, I'm sure you heard about the Zelda Netflix series coming out. I did. I think if that actually happens, it's going to be real dumb. I don't see how it could possibly ever work. But I'm, It would never work. I'm uh, The stories in those gamers are so just shallow. I, I would watch it. I, I, I would watch it. it. There's no way I wouldn't I watch it. I would watch it, too. Fuck. And here's here's one, one last thing that I just found was super interesting when I was looking through news. Um, yep. Apparently, there's making a new Dissidia Final Fantasy game for arcades really? in Japan. I mean, I liked those games. I loved those games. I bought like a lot. I bought a PSP because I literally couldn't imagine a world where I was unable to play Dissidia Final Fantasy. Those games are weird and cool, and the battle system was neat as fuck. Yeah, yeah. It, it seemed really. They had that the whole system. If, if any, if anybody hasn't played them, you get like a regular attack that just like drives up this number at the bottom of your screen. So like each damage you do, just it doesn't damage your opponent. Like if you hit an opponent for ten. It just adds 10 to this counter at the bottom of your screen, and then you have to hit them with, like, a strong attack to do any Mm. damage. And when you do that, you do all the damage in your counter, which was, like, really... There's nothing really quite like it. It, No, it's super unique, and I completely forgot about that game until you mentioned it just now. Yeah, Um, I really haven't thought about it much either since I bought a physical copy of the second game. Did you really? Yeah, definitely. Like the oh, day fuck. I got, I got that the day it came out. It came super awesome. And you like, you like real deep because I didn't. I don't think I ever played the second game. You, I never played the second one. I don't the think the second so. one's really good, but the story mode's like kind of long because it's from Japan. So it's it's yeah, like kind of hard to get to. But they add like like Kane and Tifa, and I can't remember who else. Some like Shantoto like they, from like Final Fantasy fourteen. I want to say they added either. Vivi or Steiner from FF9. They did not. Not, not well, in number fuck two. fuck that game. Um, <laughs> no, it's, I think it's just the two of them. I never played Final Fantasy IX, so I don't really know. But You I'm, never played Final Fantasy? You never played the best Final yeah, Fantasy ever? Yeah, I did. I played Final, Final Fantasy, Fantasy of the Barefoot Merchant Final Man Fantasy podcast. I a couple times, actually. You should. No, best, best, best Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy IX. Play Minus it. four. No, Final that's Fantasy five rules. No. Well, actually, yeah. yeah I, I was going to say, love. you're going to tell me it's not good? I fucking I love Final Fantasy. And you're like, that's not true. I love Final Fantasy V so much, I bought a 
SNES yes, Rebro you, Kart yes, you did. with an English patch on it. It's funny That's because much, uh, I was more than content to play the Game Boy Advance version, and then you went on this whole sucks. thing about how it sucks and is worthless. It sucks because the audio is all fucked up, and I can't remember why, but someone told me that once, and I believe them so hard I bought an SNES Rebro Kart. I didn't notice any real problems with it. Hey, man, it's okay. We can't all be like me. All right. We're gonna All have right. to save any more discussions about repro carts until until next episode of the repro cart cart repro cart cast. Hey man, man I'm like... glad we didn't really name our podcast that. That was really hard to say. No, we did. Welcome to the repro cart cast. Or re- really we're rebranding. Here we are. Um, no, but this is the uh, Bear vs. Man cast, um, bringing you bullshit about video games every week. I, I hope you get, you guys enjoyed listening to us talk like idiots about video games. Um, yes. Because we're going to be doing it once a week forever. Forever, until one of us gets herpes. And then we may still do it, because that wouldn't really stop That's us. That's not necessarily debilitating. Not necessarily. But you could get, like, a really advanced, weird... Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, we'll be back next week. Um, At some point. Go on the places where we put this. I don't know where we put this. Um, and put the five stars. Five stars it's for like, us. Is that going to be up on iTunes yet? I think we have to wait for them to, like, evaluate. I don't know. I'm sure there's an evaluation I, process of some kind. They have to look at our I stuff. I think there's – I think um, Steve Jobs' ghosts uh, – mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Listen to every podcast. <laughs> I have heard about the ghost of Steve Jobs and his yeah. podcast. Yeah, no, he does do that, um, which is why they all go up instantly. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, well, you can like that. definitely find it at www.bearversusman.com. It's gonna, yeah, well, you, it, can, you can find – there's, like, other things we put on there, like there's reviews – you can look at reviews. Eventually, when I have time I have, to write stuff, there's going to be things there, I swear. I have two. Until, there's two on Yeah, there. there's two reviews. Until then, there's going to be a bunch of links to some other stuff we've written, maybe our Twitter accounts and things like that. You want to follow us. Um, and you can just generally just hear us be idiots about games, like, whenever you want. Just open up Twitter and just... All the time I talk about me, things. Read messages from me being an idiot about games. Oh, that means I have to, like, start tweeting... Eh. Like more, yeah. Or you just like retweet a bunch of interesting stuff. I could, I could, yeah. I I sent a tweet. Anyway, it's, it's all I, irre- I did. Yeah, I did. It's all irrelevant. <laughs> all right, Ryan. Until next week. Hey, man. Later, man. See ya. Bye, everybody. <laughs>